By the grace of God, the Spirit of God today is going to teach us on the topic fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Full of fruits. Fruitfulness. What is fruit? Simply defined. Fruit is product. Fruit is result. But one important thing about fruit is that it contains seed. The seed of every tree, every plant is contained in the fruit. Meaning that if there is no fruit, there is no seed. And if there is no seed, there is no continuity. So fruit is result and product that contains seed for continuity. The biggest question that we must ask ourselves is, are we fruitful? Every living thing is designed by God to be fruitful. Every living thing, plant, animals, or human beings, if you don't want to classify humans as animals, all must produce fruits. Praise God. Lion produce fruits. Elephant produce fruits. Mango produce fruits. Is that right? Guava produce fruits. Humans produce fruits. We must produce fruits. So are we fruitful? Praise God. If we are not fruitful, any, any living thing that is not fruitful will come into what is termed extinction. The generation of that living thing will extinct. That means it will cease to exist on the surface of the earth. Fruit gives the right for that living thing to continue to exist. Basically, there are different types of fruits. As in, I mean, I'm trying to say uh, that uh, as humans, now let me bring it back to humans. There are different stages of our lives that fruits are expected to be produced by us. As a child, even children have their fruits. Yes. Children have fruits. Can we give a, let me give an example of fruits that children give that parents, you know, I once told you this story. I don't know if I, yeah, I told you guys. There's one time I rebuked my wife one time. Uh, she was trying to get sleep and then these children were just on her. You know, the two of them, they were just on her. They want to play with her and she wants to sleep. So she was annoyed and then she shouted at them. I calmed her down. I rebuked her. I said, no. There are people that are looking for children to disturb all them. Like children, come and this no children. And again, you see these children, after some years, they will come and play with you like this. You miss it. So enjoy this moment. Sleep versus the love you have for your children. You pick up the children. What is the sleep? So play with them. So one of the fruits of the children is that they give us joy. That joy is fruit. If you have children, I'm telling the truth. If you have children, they produce a fruit called joy in your home. Praise God. Youth, young people, they have their fruits. Old age has their fruits. Marriage has its fruits, not just children. Because you are married, you must produce children. It's not just that. There are different types of fruit. You are seeing that? If you are a worker, you must produce fruit. Lack of fruit qualifies you to be useless. You see that? So in any area of your life that you don't bear fruit, you are useless. If you are working, 
you must tell yourself, I must be fruitful. Imagine you are working in a company, you are not producing anything, you are not, no, nothing. You are useless. They will sack you. Won't they sack? They will sack you. No, they won't sack you, please. They will kick you out. There's, there's a, as a minister, there must be fruit. There's the fruit of the body. There's the fruit of the mind. There's the fruit of intelligence. There's the fruit of hand. This is how God has designed us to be. We must be fruitful. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The world is looking for fruitful people. Any man that is looking for a wife to marry, he will look for a wife that is fruitful. And when I'm talking about fruitful, I'm not just talking about children. Any woman that is looking for a man, she's looking for a man that is fruitful. Every CEO is looking for a worker that is fruitful. See, it's a lie that there's no vacancy. Who told you there's no employment in Nigeria? The real thing is our young people are not fruitful. Companies are looking. Look, let me tell you something. If you want to get employment from Ngote, if you produce an idea that will increase its income times 50, you employ you. You see that? That is why when you go to interview, and you are begging, you can never get the job. You go to interview and you say, sir, to, uh, uh, in my house, it's only I have no good. Please, get, I need this job. No, who will employ you? Who will employ you? But when you go to interview and say, I am here to add value to your company. I can do this and make your company to be like this. They employ, they employ you. They are ready to sack 10 people to employ you. So lack of fruitfulness. I'm telling you, when you are fruitful, people will look for you. You will become a hot cake. I'm saying in all aspects, I'm not just talking about and every aspect, people will look for you. There is someone that was going to be given a political appointment by every qualification. The guy does not deserve it based on political loyalty and allegiance. Are you getting me? Based on that. But guess what? He is the best when it comes to that field. But it's same guy that has condemned the government and all that. But they know that this guy has what it takes. They brought him. They gave him the appointment. The house she Amade gave him. People may not like your face, but they will like your fruits. So you must be fruitful. You tell yourself, I must be fruitful. I must bear fruitful. Fruits. I must bear fruit. I must be fruitful. That's going to be our prayers. Go back, go back, go and sit down. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Now, let me tell you something. Before I have one more point, then I will conclude. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. I want everybody to see this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. Father, we thank you. Then it shall come to pass because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord your God 
we keep with you the covenant. The covenant and mercy. Please, if you have, you see, I'm encouraging you guys to get, get hardcover Bible. Stop using only phones and tablets. Have them on tablets and phones. It's cool. And then still have a hardcover Bible. Please have it. Especially when we're entering next year. Because next year, next year, what God told me is there's going to be an outpour of knowledge here. There's going to be serious outpour of knowledge next day. And I'm going to introduce a one-year uh, Bible reading plan. Anybody that wants to follow me, let's go. We'll be doing, we we'll keep it every year. Every year we'll be reading the Bible at least. At least once uh, from uh, Genesis to Revelation, at least once every year. So I'm bringing, I have the plan already. It's ready. Uh, uh, they are going to print it so that I'll have them on uh, both soft copies and hard copies. So if you want to follow, you follow. So you must go and get your own Bible. There's going to be serious outpour of knowledge. Do it. Don't say because you are not a pastor. No, no, no. Do it. If you have a hardcover Bible, underline these two words the covenant and the mercy. The covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. You see, look at it and keep and do them that the Lord your God will keep with you. There is, there are two things that God has established and swore by his name. Number one is covenant with you. Number two is mercy. For what? Fruitfulness. Next verse. And he will love and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land. Your grain and your new wine and your oil. The increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flock in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. There are already covenant and mercy of fruitfulness. By covenant, God has ordained that you pay fruits. And by mercy, that you pay fruit. Amen. I don't know if you understand this. There's a covenant. Already you are in covenant with God that you bear fruit. So there is just to activate that covenant. I have a covenant. I must bear fruit. And then when there's a problem, you have seen that? That's when mercy comes. Lord, have that mercy. That mercy. How does it operate? If you are married, you don't have a child. You say, God, I have a covenant with you. You go to the hospital and then they will say, your womb is what, what, what. Now that's a biological problem. There's nothing you can do about it. Then you activate the mercy. God, I don't have this. I need your mercy. I don't know this guy. You must understand this. We must bear fruit. Praise God. And if you look at it, if you look at it, your possessions are supposed to bear fruit. That means if you have a dog, the dog should bear fruit. For the fact that it's under your possession, it is already blessed and ordained to bear fruit. Your children must bear fruit. You must speak into them. Praise God. And look, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. God does not break his covenant. If you want to hold God by the neck, there is nothing he can do. Bring his covenant. Do you see why I ask you to underline this? Praise God. Please, if you have a shop, you have a business, and then there is no fruit, go back, kneel down, open God's word. There's let me, let me share something personal to you. Okay? I'm not saying... You see, that's why it's personal. I'm not asking you to do it. If you find it, um, if you connect with it, you can do it. 
If you find it disgusting, then don't do it. You walk, wake up in the night and open this verse, open it, read it loud and carry the Bible up and say, God, this is your word. This is your word. You must honor it. You must honor your word. Then you drop it and sleep. Praise God. We must bear fruit. Turn to your neighbor and say, we must bear fruit. We must bear fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus, even our possessions must bear fruit. Because God hates barrenness. God hates anything that does not bear fruit. Because it is in his design that everything must bear fruit. Now, let me show you the season of fruitfulness. God has also, in his wisdom, designed the season of fruitfulness. Every fruit has its season, and every season has its fruit. Every fruit has its season. And every season has its fruits. Now, this, this is where you need wisdom. Amen. So let, let, me give you, let me give you a simple, very simple, very, very simple example. Some people make more money in their business during Christmas season. Is that not? It's like that now. They make more money after Christmas. The guy got naughty. <laughs> After you run, like that, some people make money during rainy season. You, you see that? Now you must understand that every season has its fruit, and every fruit has its season. Now this is wisdom. Revelation chapter twenty-two, verse two. Revelation chapter two. Sorry, Revelation 22, verse 2, sorry. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. Praise God. Number one, there's monthly fruits. You must tell yourself every month I must produce fruit. Every month I must produce fruit. What have I produced in the month of November? What will I produce in the month of December? Every month, every month that passes by and you don't produce fruit, it's a problem. You tell yourself, I refuse not to bear fruit. Every month I must produce fruit. It is what makes you fruitful. Luke chapter 13 verse 6. Luke chapter 13 verse 6. Praise God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you seeing how you're going to apply in your life? That's the last thing we're going to do. We're going to pray a confessional prayer that we must produce fruit. Our children must produce fruit. Our possessions must produce fruit. Everything that we own must produce fruit. Father, thank you. Luke chapter 13, verse 6. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. You are seeing that? Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down! Why does it use up the ground? Next verse. But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. There's just so much. There's so much to talk about this. I'm just, I want to stay. Just so much. And if it bears fruit well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. 
Next verse. Uh, nine, okay, go go back. I mean, you go back, go back. Uh, good. Stay here. That's verse seven. Then he said to the keeper, "I want you guys to see. Look f- for three years. I've come seeking fruit on this week and all that. The next." But he answered and said to him, Sir, let alone this year until I dig around. Now, this is what is happening here. This particular fig tree is supposed to be producing fruits yearly. Okay? Yearly. And that's why um, um, it's going to be the last thing I'm going to show you. This scripture is going to show us how you bear fruits. How do you bear fruits? It's going to be the last thing. Okay? Now, um, and he's told him that, okay, let me do all that it takes for this fig tree to bear fruit. And after one year, you see that? So, what I'm trying to point out here is there's yearly fruit. You will say, in 2023, what fruits have I produced? In 2024, in 2025, in 2030, in 2047, in 2080, what fruits will I be? Are you guys getting it? Are you guys getting it? So you must sit down and assess yourself apart from the monthly fruits. What are my yearly fruits? That is why some people until after 10 years they will realize that no fruits though. Praise God. Father, we thank you. You, you have a you have peak, right? Peaks. This this guy is a peak farmer. Peak. A lady farmer. Um let's 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 ask him some questions. You have rabbit. He has rabbit too. Uh, okay, you have every okay. He didn't charge Yeah. <laughs> Any opportunity. I'm so feel nice. She's sorry. He's like, I didn't, this is his field. Ah, he didn't me. So, rabbit, um, how many times uh, will a rabbit supposed to give birth to children in a year? Two times or once? Okay, at least. That's the least. Four times. So, in a year, a rabbit should give birth four times. So at one time, like how many children are they supposed to give birth to? Yes, I, I, of course, definitely. Yeah. Ten. Wow, that's serious. So some give two, three, four, and even up to ten at one time. So if you have a rabbit. That is supposed to be giving birth to 10 children. In a year, that's like 40 children. So if you have a rabbit in five years, he produce only five children. Is that rabbit healthy? You kill it and eat it. <laughs> Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, look at me very well. This same thing to you. God has designed us that at age 20, these are the fruits that we should have produced. But we have underproduced. And that is why we're, we're, we're repenting. God forgive us. We have not, you see some of you here, you are seated here. In the real sense, the fruits that you're supposed to produce, you're not supposed to be even sitting here today. You're supposed to be maybe in another country you are exp- exploiting, exploring the nations. You see that? You are supposed to be somewhere far. Praise God. You see that? God forgive us. God forgive us. We repent. We have now realized that we are supposed to produce fruits. 
Amen. It's not an issue of comparison. It's an issue of challenge. What have my mates produced? Don't look at it from the perspective of comparison. Look at it from the comparison uh, perspective of, of challenge. Because you must challenge yourself to be pushed to become productive. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be productive. Fully productive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalms chapter 1. We all know this verse. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Their seasonal fruits. This verse has shown us that their seasonal fruits. Praise God. There are seasonal fruits. It means there is season that we are supposed to produce fruit. You are seeing that? Now, I'm going to conclude. In conclusion, we know this verse. Those of you that came to, uh, you know, Second Samuel chapter seven verse ten, that time that we were leaving Egypt, when we met uh, one of our fathers, and he gave us this verse, then we fasted, and we are praying it, praying it, praying it. And God brought us to this place that people are marveled. How did we get this place? Unfortunately for them, we too, we don't even know how. We can't explain. We can't say, no, no, no. We can't explain. And please don't think that we use any connection. We didn't use any connection. Like we connect, we know this guy, then we go and beg, please. No, no, no. It just, they gave us in fact, when we went to ask uh, for somewhere else, not even here, they said that place is not available, nothing. We should go. This is on our way. We are going out. Then they call us. Hey, why not? There is a place like that. Go and check. You see? And then we found ourselves here. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them. Number one way to become fruitful is find where God has planted you to be. You cannot be fruit where you are not planted by God. If you plant yourself by yourself in the place that God has not ordained you to be planted, you cannot bear fruit. Even if you are working in presidential villa as a rock, if God has not truly ordained you and planted you to be there, you will still bear no fruit. If you are in one remote village, there is no network, there is no electricity, there is no water, and it is purposed by God that you are ordained to be planted there, you will bear fruit. That is why it is not only about going to the USA. Going to, to UK to live there. It is about where has God ordained you to be planted? It is not about working in NNPC. Oh, because if you believe that it is NNPC that have money, say, ah, my, my uncle is working in NNPC. And if you go, he's a security man. But as far as he's working in NNPC, that prophet is my uncle is working in NNPC. You believe that? So if God has not ordained you to be planted in NNPC, you cannot be fruit. That is why if you carry um, uh, a rice and, and plant it in where it is not supposed to be planted, it will not bear fruit. 
It may even grow. It will grow, but it will refuse to bear fruit. Please, growth is different from bearing fruit. There are two different things. You can grow without bearing fruit. And it's useless. That is why growth is fruitfully growing. That is when growth is complete. Have you not seen people who are earning thousands of money, millions of money, yet they will commit suicide? They are suicidal. Praise God. So, God must appoint a place. That's why you must carry this vessel. You guys don't, you guys remember, with, with is it three days or four days? Three days. Eh? Three, four days, I think. We, yes, four days. We fasted, first, second, third, then the fourth day, we all gather in my house and we pray. And we're only praying this verse. Because that's what uh, 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 one of our fathers gave us, this verse. And then we're just praying. We're saying, God, appoint a place for us. Appoint a place for us. Appoint a place for us according to your word. And God appointed this place for us to be here. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Please, if you are not ready for God's move, don't pray this prayer. I'm telling you. Because you may be walking or you are living in just, you are comfortable. Then you pray this verse. The first thing is God will terminate you from where you are walking. It's the first thing. You receive termination later. You receive a reason to leave just. You become uncomfortable. That's how God does his thing. Then he'll push you to where you're supposed to be planted. Don't you know that that's what God did to us? We have never thought of living museum. You can just imagine this. Niharius have been about Mamaki. Many in Which should have left that place since. No, no, it's true now. We should have left there since. But we just did. Munashe wala, but we just did. Kisa wala de mushan Ha, ha, ha. We use that place only Sunday in the morning. Sometimes when I say you man, I na wujana jerum. We are not comfortable, but we just did. Then when it was God, Kai God, I say when I get some men, I would drive them by force. See issues everywhere. It was just one day, and I pass it. We are living today. We are living. <laughs> Amen. If you want to, but I tell you guys, I tell you, it is better to suffer in the process, but in God's part. Because at the end, it will be laughter. You look back and say, God, I thank you. That's why I'm, I'm still thanking God for what happened, no? Hey, woo! I'm still thanking God Father, thank you. Thank God, I thank him. Praise God. It's going to be our prayer. Say, God, appoint a place for me to be planted. The next one, I want to balance this. The next verse. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 31. Everybody see it. See it. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. What is this? Huh? Is this Isaiah? Huh? Isaiah what? Isaiah 37 verse 31. Is that it? And the remnant, uh -huh, this is it. And the remnant who have escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit Upward. You see, I'm giving you how to. Number one is to be planted, right? Number two, to be rooted. You can be planted, but if you are not rooted, you will not bear fruit. To be rooted means because the essence of roots is taking nutrients. That's why some of you, you are planted to be in Hasri 316, but you are not rooted in, in, in Hasri 316. 
Do you get? You are planted to be here. In fact, you are planted here. Where is your church? House 316. Where is your fellowship? House 316. You are planted. That's you are identified to be here. But you are not rooted. We are having school of ministry. Only 10, about 10, look at us. Only about 10 people come to school of ministry. You are not rooted. And I'm just looking. One of the things the Lord told me is don't push people. That's why I didn't push. I sent text. Sent text. Whenever I'm sending this text, I say, God, how I wish these guys would understand this school of ministry. You're not rooted. Root means to be rooted. Because the essence of root is what? Is acquiring nutrients of that soil. That's the fertilizer. Fertilizer will not work if the plant does not have roots. The root um, takes in the fertilizer as nutrient to the plant. Are you guys getting me? You're not rooted. So you must be what? Planted and rooted. You see from the scriptures. You must be planted and rooted. You ask yourself, am I planted? Am I rooted here? And one essence of being rooted is that the wind will come. You refuse to, to, to the, the wind cannot blow you down off. The roots make the plant to stand strong. The wind will come, the rain will come, it's standing. If you are root planted and rooted to be here, whatever is happening here, I day can pay. Can pay? Can pay? How do you Can pay? Can pay? I day can pay? Can pay? I know you are you not much. Can pay? Anytime I'm speaking broken, there's one guy that always called me. We always speak uh, in broken English. So anytime I'm doing, my wife will just be laughing. I mean, I'm at a rage. <laughs> but, hey, how you doing now? That's the way we talk about <laughs> this. Broken. Kai, kai, kai. Praise God. Are you getting it? You must be planted and rooted. Where are you walking? If God has appointed you to be there, be planted and be rooted. You are working. You don't have your boss's phone number. You are not rooted. You don't know what is happening in the company. You are not rooted. You don't have the visions and aims, objectives of the company. You are not rooted. You just did it. You are just after salary. Be rooted. Put your head there. Do this seminar. Go there and learn. Do this. Do you. That's the meaning of being rooted. You are in Joss. You don't know what is going on in Joss. You are not rooted. You are only planted. Be rooted means that you take the nutrients of that place. There are a lot of goodies coming out from Joss. You are not enjoying anyone because you are not rooted. You must be rooted and planted. To what? To bear fruit. See it? Again, take root downward. And bear fruit upward is a principle. I cannot be rooted and not bear fruit. All these guys, you guys that do ministry, it's the same thing. You cannot be rooted in God's word and the result will not show forth. The reason why two music ministers will come and sing one same song and you see the difference. One is rooted. There are roots that he has developed already. And so he will produce more fruit. Praise God. You are a music minister. Take time. Fast. Pray. On your own. Don't wait for your church to declare it. You don't have calendar for spiritual activities. You don't. If the pastor of your church does not announce it, 
you remain the way you are until the pastor say, we are fasting this week and then you fast. You are not serious. You are not rooted. To be rooted means that you have your calendar. Every this I do this. Every this I do that. Every day I do that. Praise God. You bear no fruit. You are planted there. Oh. It's not, see, you are planted there, but there are no fruits. It's painful. You are planted. But you will not bear fruits because you are not rooted. So I'm telling the difference between being planted and rooted. Are you blessed? Father, we thank you. Glory be to your name. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you the Spirit of God will just show us these three things. And then we're going to just pray briefly. I will need everyone to pray and say, God, make me, make me fruitful. And then uh, appoint a place for me to be planted and to be rooted in the mighty name of Jesus. I see God I see God's touch on us. We bear fruits by revelation, by the miraculous, and by nature. There's a form of revelation that will hit you and you begin to bear fruit. Revelation is light. Revelation is understanding. Revelation is knowledge. You receive a certain enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment, that will make you to begin to bear fruit. And I see that happening today in the mighty name of Jesus. Today you have all seen the need to bear fruit. You have also seen that God has authorized you to bear fruit. And by that knowledge, by that revelation of God's word, you begin to bear fruit in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Result of revelation is that you bear fruit. The result of revelation is that you bear fruit. The result of revelation is that you bear fruit. And because God's revelation has hit you today, you bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. And then number two, by the miraculous, you are in a place, in a situation where you cannot bear fruits by all biological means, scientific means, natural means, and then by the miraculous, because we serve a powerful God, the God who has created everything. He can make things the way he wants it. By the miraculous, you can receive your fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. And I see the angels of heaven laying their hands on us to receive these fruits by the miraculous in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall produce fruits by the miraculous in the mighty name of Jesus because we serve a miracle God in the name of Jesus. We shall produce fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. And then lastly, by nature, naturally, God has ordained you to bear fruits. You are created to bear fruit. And because of that, you bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing can stop you. Because God has ordained that by nature, you bear fruit. And so you shall bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We're going to pray. Let's be on our feet as I read this verse. I'm going to read this verse. Exodus chapter. Please, can you can you project it? Exodus chapter 25. We are going to use this verse and then we are going to pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. There's none like you. I shall bear fruit. Come on, begin to confess that. I shall bear fruit. I shall bear fruit. I shall bear fruit. Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Exodus 23, 26, we're going to use this verse and pray. I want everybody to open their mouth and pray. It says, no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Now, let me tell the meaning of miscarriage. 
The meaning of miscarriage is aborted dreams, aborted visions, aborted plans. You have planned to do this, then along the line, you abort it. That means you leave it, you, you keep it aside and all that. It crashes down and all that. That will not happen in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. And then, oh, to be barren. We barren means our fruitlessness. That's not producing fruit. We shall bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus and fulfill the number of your days. Let me tell you one type of fruit that I didn't mention. Getting to the age that God has designed you is also fruit. We shall be fruitful. We shall live to the time that God has designed for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to confess, I shall fulfill my days. 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 I shall bear fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to extend this prayer to your children, to your possession, to your family. My children shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. My children shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything I possess shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything I possess shall be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus to the glory of his name. Ratatata sakata, ramashi katata. I shall bear fruit. I shall bear fruit. I shall bear fruit. My children shall bear fruit. Ere rabashi ere ra, rakani kasakata, mashi kata rita ta, rika si kata shi kata, rana rara ra, rakasakata, rika shi kata. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, I want us to pray and say, God, appoint a place for me to be planted and rooted so that I'll bear fruit. Appoint a place. Now, please, listen to me. Let me describe this appoint a place so that you understand it very well. Appoint a place is not only locational. It can also be occupational. That means that it can be your job. That which way do you want me to walk? Appoint a place where I'm designed and made to walk. Okay? Where am I supposed to be? Where, where, where? Where is this supposed to be my ministry? Where is this supposed to be my ministry? What is my ministry? That is, a, God will appoint you to your ministry. Are you getting me? Are you, are you getting me? You must get me. You must get me. And then, of course, it is locational. Where? Which location? Where? Where am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be in Joss? Am I supposed to be in Abuja? Am I supposed to be in Lagos? Am I supposed to be wherever it is? Where am I supposed to be? Oh God, appoint a place for me. Appoint a place for me. Open your mouth and pray. Appoint a place for me to be planted and to be rooted. Appoint a place for me to be planted and to be rooted. Nene kasakata. Rikata shikata. Aramisa katata. Radarada. Ranisa katata sekata. Renini kashikata tata sekeraba. Rirarara sarava shirirara. Rini kasa. Appoint a place for me. Reba te te te. Rikasi katasha. Rini katasa kata. Radisa tata. Rini kasi kata. Shikata talikara. Appoint a place for me. Appoint a place for me. Oh God. To be rooted and planted. Rera raba satasha kata. That I may bear fruit to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We shall bear fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall be planted and rooted in where God has appointed for us in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that everyone in this room you will begin to bear fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare by the authority of heavens that anybody that is here under the sound of my voice, you are not permitted to be buried in the mighty name of Jesus. I pronounce that your hands shall produce fruits. I pronounce that your brain shall produce fruits. 
I pronounce that your womb shall produce fruit. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is also what is called the fruits of the tongue. You shall produce the fruits of your tongue in the mighty name of Jesus. To the glory of God. And I declare that anyone here that is not planted where God has appointed them to be, I uproot you by, the, by God's word in the mighty name of Jesus. Move to where God has appointed you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Be planted and be rooted in the name of Jesus. You will bear fruit and you shall fulfill your days. Your children shall fulfill your day, their days in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke every distraction in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you. Just thank God for answering our prayers. Father.